If you're wondering how to make a riser effect in FL Studio, or really any DAW, this tutorial will show you three different ways to make one, like how to handle percussion, white noise, and synths in a riser, as well as all of the effects you can be using to make them more interesting. Here's an example of one of the risers that we'll be making in this video. Hey everyone, Jake from Transverse Audio here. If you're not using FL Studio, you'll still be able to take away pretty much all of the techniques I'll be going over in the video. But I will be focusing on this DAW's workflow, so adapt to the options that are available to you in your DAW. The first riser I'll go over is simply going to use white noise. These kinds of buildups are great for adding some thickness to other sounds as it fills up the frequency spectrum. I'm going to use 3x OSC for this as it's extremely lightweight, and by that I mean it doesn't take up much CPU. Set the first oscillator to white noise, which is the dice, and don't worry about the other two since their mix level should be at zero, essentially muting them. Then go into the piano roll for the white noise plugin and draw out a note to the length you want the riser to last, and put the pattern in the playlist. After you get all of that set up, you'll need a cutoff filter. In the case of FL Studio, I like to use Fruity Free Filter. You can't find this plugin in the main menu, so you'll have to go to the More Plugins option and then down to the search bar and you can enter free since it's the only plugin that has that in its name. Double click on the plugin and there you go. Keep it on low pass and drop the frequency down to 10 Hz, which is just the lowest it will go. And set the cue to just barely have one bar. Up to the top left, you'll find the hint panel and you'll be able to see how many bars it has there. You might want it at this setting because if you have it too high, it will start to sound a bit like a sine wave. And if you have it too low, it will kind of suppress the white noise and you can just leave the gain where it is. Now, right-click the frequency knob and create an automation clip. Starting from zero, drag the end to where you want the riser to stop at. You can always increase the Q setting if that's the sound you're after. Okay, so let's go over what you can do to percussion to give a riser more of an impact. Then we'll go over making a synth riser. When it comes to the drums, it largely has to do with the timing of each note, playing it faster and faster as the riser progresses. But I'll show you another trick to make it sound even better in just a moment. Take the percussion and start them off in the same way they play in the rest of the track, for about two bars. Then double their speed for the next bar, and double it again for the last bar. It's really up to you though. You can double the speed every bar, or even faster if you like. Now for that trick I was talking about before. Automating the pitch of the drums will make it sound pretty cool too. You can set the max to anything, but at 12 or 24, you can hear a significant change. Again, right click and create an automation clip and bring it from its original, which is 50%, to the max. You can even change the position of the curve to make it more unique, whether that's the position of the automation or the tension of the curve. Time for the synth riser, and for this, I'm gonna add in quite a lot of effects to make it. After you've found a sound you like, whether that's making your own or finding a preset, it's then time to automate some parameters. I'll start off with the cutoff frequency. If you're using a third-party plugin, you'll need to handle it a bit differently from native ones, but it is simple. Just change the parameter a bit, and then go up to the tools menu, then down to last tweaked. From here, you'll be able to create an automation clip for the last and second last parameter you changed. For this riser, I'm going to start it off muffled and then make it brighter over time. And this can start or end at any value. Next, I'll create a similar effect with reverb. Starting from 100% wet, I'll create an automation clip, just like I did with the cutoff frequency. And move it from wet to dry. If you're going to leave a bit of silence directly after the riser to create tension, you might want to go the other way, bringing it from dry to wet. Cool, now I'm going to turn this into an ARP or arpeggio and start its speed off slow. I'll use the ARP feature built into the plugin wrapper, which can be used on any plugin. First, select the direction of the ARP. Having in the X selected means it's off. I'll just use up. Then pick the chord the ARP will play in, such as major. The range determines how many octaves the ARP will travel, and don't worry, I'll explain what an octave means later. 
Now all that's left to do is automate the speed of the ARP, and it will go down since the lower the value, the faster it will be. If you're going to have an ARP play right after the riser as a main element in your music, you might want to bring the riser to the same speed to make a smoother transition. And that brings me to the last technique I'll be using on this riser, which is pitch shifting. Now, I mentioned it before with the percussion, but I want to go a bit more in depth with it for the synth. With FL Studio, we have a pitch control right in the plugin wrapper menu. Keep an eye on the hint panel, usually on the top left. You'll be able to see the value of what you're changing. The knob will change the pitch in cents, and the number to the right will change the pitch range in semitones. Each note is separated by 100 cents and each semitone is just a single note, including both black and white keys. That's why when you have it set to 100 cents at one semitone, it's at the max, because there is only one note. At two, it will only take up half, and so on. I'll set the range to 12, making it an octave. An octave, by the way, is from one note to the same note in a higher or lower pitch. Okay, enough about the terminology. My point is, I'm going to bring the riser from a lower octave to the same note the melody starts off with to give it more flow. Now, with it all together, this is what it sounds like. Don't be afraid to mix and match the effects and techniques I mentioned in the video with different kinds of risers, and try to find out new things to automate as well. Oh, and let me know in the comments below if you liked it when I explained things in depth, like when I was talking about the semitones and octaves. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials like this. Not only does it keep you up to date, but it tells me to make more content for you. As always, thanks for watching.